more recently, I say recently, it certainly was coming very much into the fore when I when I began my career. We're moving uh, into utilising the biopsychosocial model for assessment and treatment. Prior to this, we would use a biomedical model where whereby a patient would present with low back pain and the doctor would send them for investigations or whatever and they'd come up with a diagnosis of a slip disc or a strained back or whatever. The problem sort of kind of matters, okay, if it's an acute problem, then it's understandable it's a cute problem somebody's bent forward suddenly their back when it could be something that that's involved strain muscle uh, caption entrapment or something like that but it's when the we start going into the sort of more chronic situation where after a few weeks the pain is still continuing and the patient is not able to move and function in the way that they would wish and the biomedical model then starts to become a little bit uh, less useful whereby the doctor will say you've got this this and this you have to treat it with this this and this and when it doesn't work how do we carry on so the biopsychosocial model or paradigm or have whatever words you want to use is uh, a better model for how we can approach. I mean, it was first conceptualized by George Engel in 1977, so it's been around a bit. I mean, 1977 was the year I left school. I'm getting on, so it's been around quite a long time. Um, and it, it basically suggests that we, we need to understand a person's condition and their problem uh, and their needs according to biological and psychosocial factors as opposed to just biomedical. Whereas before, one would go to the doctor and the doctor would say, you have a slip disc, you need these tablets, or you need an operation, or you need this. Now it's going along the lines of, well, hold on, maybe he doesn't need all those ex ex investigations immediately, maybe he doesn't need to be treated like that. Maybe we can sort of alter things by changing lifestyle and 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 how we we treat the patient and react towards the patient. So basically it's made up of three areas, the biological area, which would be physiological, anatomical structures. They're still relevant. They're still there. They still have an effect. They're still important. The psychosocial element, psycho psychological elements could include like the thoughts, the emotions, the behaviors, the, um, how, how the patient feels about it, their beliefs, um, the, the way they cope with their problem. And then we could have other social factors that could be impinging or impacting on these things, like, you know, what's going on with their job? Are there any sort of compensation? Are there sort of social economical problems that could be causing? Because these do have an effect on the way the brain is working and, and could thus sort of have an effect on sort of chronic pain. But as I said, of late, I've noticed more, more and more sadly that, and these are often people who have just converted to the biopsychosocial model, which is great, no problem, it's what we should be doing. And we should be doing it with evidence base. But what they're doing is they're taking the, the evidence and just saying, well, okay, it's all psychosocial, ignore the bio, sometimes paying a little bit of lip service. Um, and they're not giving credit for some of the biological or the physical inputs that we could be having. Basically, one needs to look at, and um, Laura, uh, Professor Mosley, Laura Mosley, describes it very well, and on another site uh, by Paul in uh, Ingram, especially with chronic pain, these sort of pain processes are basically processed by the brain. You've basically got some sort of information coming in saying that this hurts, the brain sort of processes it in its various parts according to experience, according to this and according to that, and then it sends down messages and, and we kind of act accordingly. Um, and that's important to understand that. And those things can be affected by like the sort of psychosocial elements, the cycle uh, uh, um, that I just mentioned, whether it be economic, social, economic, or, 
or psychological belief coping strategies or whatever they they have a big effect they're important to understand but equally we can if we are not psychologists or not comfortable with working in that that way we can still have a great deal of effect on people using manual techniques using exercise using massage or whatever because basically what you're looking at here is a very old chemistry set and back when I was a, a youngster I was every Christmas basically my parents were in total fear of losing the house or me ending up in casualty because um, somebody's blown up my blind my eyebrows off because I'm messing around with the chemicals and I think they've banned those sets now quite rightly because they were dangerous but if you're looking at this this is a big chemistry set and I can have effects on the input of that big chemistry set on the brain using manual techniques, exercise techniques, electrothera electrotherapeutic modalities, acupuncture, whatever, and they can be useful. Equally, I can have an effect on the input to the brain and therefore the output and the influence of the output concerning pain or dysfunction by doing, uh, by sort of addressing some of the other issues like poor lifestyle, poor nutrition, poor exercise. So we need to consider that. We need to consider both areas without running down one more than the other. They're both useful to different degrees and, uh, and therefore quite, quite important for us to to be able to, to utilise uh, and carry on to get our best outcomes, which is basically what we're after for our patients.